All right, now we'll talk about a three-point buck in. I've already shown you the two-point buck in, and I've shown you the formula. So we're gonna do a two-point buck in, but we're gonna add a third point. The reason for this, the reason for adding the third point, when I do the two-point buck in, I have to measure a straight line. In other words, when I did that, I kept this base in, in a straight line. I can't move it from side to side. When I do a three-point buck in, I grab a third point. Now I can measure this whole plane. Now, one of the advantages that we have is we can measure this plane. We can measure roll in this base. If I'm using a straight line laser, I can measure the flatness and the straightness of this straight line right here. I can move over and I can measure the flatness and straightness of this, but I can't tell how parallel these are to each other. With the scanning laser, we're measuring this whole plane so I can measure what we call a roll in this base or parallelism of these two ways. When I set this up, this is the best place to place this laser, is here in the corner, so I'm only using a 90 degree sweep. All of our specs give us the specs for a 360 degree sweep. So when we set it here and only use a 90 degree sweep, we cut all those specs in half. All of our tolerances are cut in half. So this is, and it's a lot easier to do here. This is the easiest buck in that you'll have because we're bucking in two points in a straight line and, a, and another, a third point over here. Okay, when I set this down, I know this base isn't level. So that's the whole reason of doing a three-point buck in. I want to see how flat this is. I don't care how level it is. Then I know it's not level, so we're just going to make this parallel to three points. So I set the target up, and I adjust it so it's at the height of the laser, so the laser beam's somewhere's passing through the center of this target. Okay, now I've already taken the measurements. I know that my L1 dimension here is six and a half inches. And I know my L2 dimension is 49 and a half inches. So I've taken some of the work out of it. And just like before, wherever I place this target, I'm gonna make a footprint. I always wanna set it in the same spot so I get good repeatability. And I always wanna keep the base facing the same direction. Now, if when I move this over here, I turn this base like this. That's okay if I do that every time. But if I'm moving it around and I keep turning the base and I want to get repeatability, I have to remember which way I had the base turned at each point. So to make things simple, I always keep the base facing in the same direction. I never get confused and I always get good repeatability. So we set this up. I have it. I'm gonna turn the laser on, and I'm gonna get some numbers. I'm gonna make this zero, just like we did with the two-point buck in. Okay, and I'm gonna take this down to the far point and just get a far reading. I'm not gonna adjust this yet. I'm gonna do my math here. I'm gonna take my 6.5 divided by 49.5, and I get 0 0.1313. I'm gonna multiply that times the far reading. The far reading being plus 0 0.0316. I get plus 0 0.0041. Now I'm gonna multiply that times a negative one, which gives me a minus 0 0.0041. When I multiply it by a negative number and just basically changing the sign. So 0 0.0041 minus becomes my set point. So now I'm gonna tilt this until that reads minus 0 0.0041. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it back to the near point. Minus point zero zero four one. So 
I'm bucked into these two points that quick. Now I'm gonna re-zero this, and I'm gonna grab a third point over here. Keeping the base in the same direction, I'm gonna turn the target head to face the, the turret. Now over here, because this is directly in line with the pivot, I don't need to work the formula in this direction. So I'm just gonna now tilt it in this direction until I read zero. Okay, now because I've tilted this in this direction, and this is the way this pivots, I'm gonna change here a little bit. It could change a little bit in this direction as well, so I have to go back and re-zero here. I'm gonna work these three in, so now I'm gonna go back to this point. Go back to zero again. Back to the near point. Re zero. Zero. Come down here. Okay, I'm gonna move this just a little bit because we, we lost a little bit by going sideways. Come back to the near point. I'm gonna re-zero on this point and recheck all three points. Zero. Zero. And I'm zero. So now I've made the plane parallel to these three points. Now I can check any place on this base. If I'm high, I'll get a plus number. If I'm low, I'll get a negative number. What I like to do first is check the four corners. I know these three corners are zero. I'm gonna check over here. And over here, I'm reading minus one, one and a half thousandths. So I know this rail is not parallel to this rail. It runs downhill. We're not level now. We know we're not level, but we're checking how flat this is. So when there's roll, I need to fix the roll, and then I can really check the rest of it. But meantime, I could check any place on this side. And if I set here, plus seven tenths. Plus seven tenths. And plus one thousandth. So I can see this one runs, has a little hill, and I know that one runs downhill. But I can check any place, and, and if I have levelers or adjusters, I could adjust this and make it flat. So that's how we do a three-point bucket, and using one target. It takes a little bit longer, but we're using one target, and, and if I'm doing multiple long bases, I'm gonna use three targets, which I'll describe next. Thank you.